Hi everyone, welcome back to these processes from the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular is planning our schedule management. Now where does plan schedule management fit in the overall scheme of your project? As you can see, we're in the planning process group. So now we're planning all of the details of our project and we've gathered our scope up here and now it's time to move into the activities and schedules for those activities um, that relate to the scope that we've gathered. But first we need to plan the approach to how we're going to do all of that. And that's the first thing that we're doing as part of a project schedule management. So what is planning schedule management? It's the process of establishing the policies, the procedures, and the documentation for planning, developing, managing, executing, and controlling the project schedule. So what is the process behind all of the schedule things that we're going to be doing for our project? And we do this because it provides guidance and direction on how the project schedule will be managed throughout the project. So how will you know, the activities be outlined? How will they be controlled to, be, to make sure that everything is on, on, on track? Who will be involved and what's the process there? Inputs, tools and techniques and outputs for plan schedule management. We've got our project charter. We've got the project management plan, EEFs and OPAs. Tools and techniques that we'll see are expert judgment, data analysis and meetings. And of course the output is the schedule management plan itself, that process that we're going to be using for using and controlling our schedule. And of course, planning schedule management has an input into all of these project schedule, project management plan um, you know, details that we're going to need to be updating and changing over time because of the schedule components. And of course, inputs, project management plan and develop project charter, and, and of course our EEFs and OPAs. Let's look at the inputs in a little bit more detail. The project charter, of course, is that, that summary and high level detail so it provides the, the summary milestone schedule that we initially outlined. So to initiate the project, we made our project charter and we had a high level detail of what it might take to deliver that project. So now we're gonna use that as an input into planning our schedule management to get a, a basic idea of what we might need to do. The project management plan, of course, will be an input. So the scope management plan, all of that scope that we have gathered and the process that we use to gather it. And of course, the development approach that we're using. Is it a waterfall? Is it agile? Is it incremental or is it iterative? What are, the, what are the details around there? And how are we going to be defining, that will affect how we define our schedule. You know, is it, is it done over time or is it done in all one big bang at the beginning? We'll need to know the development approach. EEFs or enterprise environmental factors, of course, things will impact your, the, your way of work and your project like the existing structure and culture. So is there already an agile culture within your organization? Or is there, are there certain scheduling softwares or tools that you're using? And team resources, so are they readily available or is it really hard to get resources in the organization that you're working in? All of these things will change depending on where you are and even where you are in a particular organization as well. Guidelines or criteria for tailoring the organization's processes. So are there existing guidelines for schedule management? And of course, any commercial databases um, where we're standardizing that estimating data. So that we might have you know, a, an actual unit of measure. We know that this contractor takes two weeks every time to do this particular task. So what's that commercial database? Is there any information already existing that we can draw upon as part of our enterprise environmental factors? Now, organizational process assets, so templates and forms, existing reporting tools, uh, existing informal schedule development management and control related policies or procedures, and any historical information that we might see that we can use as part of our project. Let's look at the tools and techniques. Now, as you can see, expert judgment again comes up. We're gonna need expert judgment a lot in all of the projects that we use. Uh, and that could be expertise on schedule development, management and control. Is there someone who's done this before or someone who's an expert in developing schedules uh, or looking at the durations of activities and that sort of thing in this particular area? 
any scheduling methodologies, so for agile, agile experts or you know, waterfall experts, scheduling software, who's an expert in that particular software, maybe whatever it is, Microsoft Project or even using Kanban boards on Trello or Jira, and specific industry expertise as well. Wherever you're going into, you're going to need someone who's an expert in that area to help you with the scheduling information and durations. Now, of course, we're going to need to analyze all of that data as well. So a data analysis, analysis technique that can be used for this process is alternatives analysis. And this is when we're determining which schedule methodology we're going to be using. So, or how can we combine various methods? So which uh, maybe we want to use an agile methodology, maybe we want to use the critical path method. But um, either way, we might need to look at a few different alternatives and which one is going to be the best for us for this particular project. Of course, we're going to need meetings to help gather that information and to disperse that information and give that information out to the relevant people. So as we're developing the schedule management plan, participants at these meetings may include the project manager and the project sponsor, selected team members, stakeholders, or anyone with the responsibility for planning, for schedule planning or execution, and anyone else as needed. So meetings are often the best way and the fastest way to get consensus on something and to give information quickly. So you'll definitely come across meetings a lot in your project management career. Now the outputs for plan schedule management are the schedule, is the schedule management plan itself. And the schedule management plan will need to establish things like the, you know, any iterations. What's the iteration length? Is it two to four weeks? Is it two weeks? Is it four weeks? What is it and what are we going to do at the end of that? Uh, so the level of accuracy that's required for activities. Any units of measure? Are we measuring in uh, t-shirt sizes? Are we measuring in, you know, days, months, weeks? Uh, how are we actually measuring these things? Uh, and how are we using to, to control the schedule. So is it the, the schedule performance index that we'll see come up soon as well? Um, or any other methods for controlling the schedule there? Uh, rules of performance measurement, reporting, and what's the reporting formats that we're going to use? Um, or any other items related to planning out the schedule and the process of creating that schedule. And that is all the information from Plan Schedule Management as part of the PMBOK Guide.